Hi guys, it's Peter and welcome to the channel. And today we're gonna install it RGB to HDMI on my beloved Amiga 500. I bought the full kit from uh, amigastore.eu EU. And I'm glad I did, I bought the full kit because I'm a kind of newbie for something like that and for me it will be hard if I get just only adapter then get a Raspberry Pi from somebody else then I will have to pre-install it uh, firmware, I mean the software on the SD card in this case I bought everything in included and that will be make installation processes process much easier for to do this installation, of course, we have to open the Amiga. Also, I got a couple tools, uh, the chip extractor and a flat screwdriver, just in case if I need it. And let's see, let me put these guys on the side. And pretty much, now I have to decide it which Amiga I is gonna use it. Because I have more than one, like I mentioned before. Here's my beloved Amiga 500. Plus, here's my Another Amiga 500, which I uh, clean it, repair it, some repairs done, a little bit uh, floppy drive. Actually, I little bit floppy drives on all my Amigas, and uh, I didn't did retrobrite it on my on the housing itself. Here's my third Amiga 500, which uh, this is my, and one of those from those two. I will give it to a friend of mine. I'm making this Amiga for him. And that's gonna be not this one. Because I already modified a power supply. Not this one either. Huh. I thought I did modified power supply as well. Well actually it looks like since my both Amigas power supply was not modified to 110. Uh yeah, it's gonna use this Amiga, my beloved Amiga 500 Plus. It's gonna install it kit, see how it, everything works, how easy to install it. And then when one of those other Amigas is gonna be done with a uh, Madina power supply, you see, internal little Pico uh, 150 watt power supply. I really like this guy compared to a big one because with this one I can use it a uh, small wall brick charger 12 volts and will run no problem okay pretty much let's do what need to be done first and let's unplug it a keyboard then uh, let's instruct it Denise first because it's gonna go on where the Denise is and actually Oh, it's stuck pretty good. Let me kind of break it loose with screwdriver first. Okay, finally I got it. Now... Okay guys, I'm back, pretty much, let's see what we need to do next. Uh, adapter, actually, let's go through instructions, because I never read instructions, I never go through them, I always kind of think, ah, instructions, it's for some dummies. But then when I break something, then I feel like I'm a dummy guy, didn't go to through instructions. Actually, it looks like straightforward. And... Uh, uh, that capacitor probably is gonna be on the way. I hope not, but let's see. Yeah. Okay, basically let's pull it out Raspberry Pi. Also guys, I did go grab it my uh, uh, ground strip. Make sure now I'm I'm good, and um, let's see, it's gonna go this way, right? 
Yeah, it's gonna go this way. You see, guys? That's why I bought the, the whole kit. Make sure the pins, all pins, will align it with this uh, uh, socket. I mean, male will align it with female. Not not one one roll out or one roll in. Same thing uh, up and down. Make sure they all fit properly. Because otherwise, if you miss it on one roll side to side or up and down, when you power it, it may fry it. Uh, then, let's see. SD card, which is supposed to be preloaded, everything is good to go. Otherwise, I will be stuck in a deep problem. Oh, it's not a spring load. I thought this little uh, SD card slot, micro SD card slot, will be spring loaded, and it's not. It's okay. And then, basically, removing that foam. All pins from factory looks nice and straight. And then clip it. And here's a problem. Okay, guys. Simply, it will not fit into my Mika 500 due to Pico internal Pico power supply. When I designed it, this, this Pico power supply, how it's gonna fit, I didn't, of course, I didn't count on that adapter. Pretty much, I will have to use it another Amiga, which is no big deal. Uh, uh, let's let's actually install it on that Amiga, which it will go to a friend of mine. Like I said, it's okay, no biggie. Okay, guys. Well, I did. I did pick it a better looking one. Pretty much, it's a good friend, and for good friend, uh, usually you give it a better, a better Amiga. <laughs> okay, let's do same thing with that. Actually, before we extract the chip, let's make sure it, the board will fit, no problem. And now. We're gonna do the same extraction like we did on a, on a Mega 500. Yeah, I did. I did bend it a one back pin a little bit, but it's no big deal. I straight it. I'm gonna straight it back. The thing is, I used to have a special screwdriver, which is a flat screwdriver, twice wider than this guy, but it's bent, it's bent like an L shape. And with that screwdriver, I used to have somewhere laying around, it will easy to pop at this side, start it pop at this side, this side, and then with that extractor, it pulls no problem. It's okay. Uh, let's see. Let's install it the knees first into socket. Make sure everything is gonna fit the way it should be. And make sure when you put the chip, make sure the notch is going towards your right or towards number one. Because if you rotate it, of course, it will fry it. It's kind of funny. I'm pretending like I know what I'm talking about and I'm doing that for first time in my life. You guys probably laughing already. Okay, it's going this way. Make sure all pins align it the way it should be. Uh, that's nice. Then take a good look. Make sure all the pins Alignment, like I said, the way it should be. And of course, it did come with a little uh, extension cable from mini to full size HDMI, but I'm not gonna use it. I'm gonna use it my long cable, and I already hook it up to TV. It's also full size to mini. Oh, it fits nice, nice and snug. 
and then let's check to see where the cable goes and cable it's a little cable probably like a foot long or so with switch that's for getting into menu and it goes on those two pins which located to the right on the adapter board you see guys right there there's a one pin also i'm not really sure what what's uh, that one pin do but you connect it to those two on the picture it shows red to the right black to the white uh, to the left but of course the two pin adapter i mean like a connector with switch it doesn't matter how to do but of course we will follow it to instruction and do exactly the way they showing let's put it aside now let me grab it actually let me put it a uh, keyboard back and keyboard goings oh that's nice yeah before before you plug it hdmi cable you should plug it your keyboard because otherwise it's really hard to do that okay guys now i'm getting one step closer to be done oh that that looks awesome now let me plug it in and we will test it okay guys now it's gonna be a moment of truth let's flip it a switch i mean power switch and if you did recognize it i did plug it both both monitors and uh, pretty much my 15 kilohertz monitor and modern hdmi monitor well it's a tv let's see let me turn the lights off for better picture i hope it's gonna be better picture but and let me repa uh, repo reposition camera as well actually it's kind of funny <laughs> this monitor on the camera it looks much better it's brighter and picture is nice clean it has some gel bars but that's uh, need to be adjusted on the monitor itself actually i don't remember exactly how to do uh, menu after adjustment let's let's try it after adjustment yeah actually it's much better but in real life uh, from from where i'm sitting and i'm sitting right kind of uh, if I look it straight, it's gonna be right between screens. This screen actually looks looks much better. It's like I said, it's kind of weird because on the camera, this one to me looks better, but in real life, this one it looks much better. Okay, let's let's put my uh, one of my favorite game and see which one's gonna be looks really nice. But also, I want to mention it. I didn't get in the menu. Uh, I mean and adjusted any settings but already I mean with, with HDMI looks really nice and colors looks really good as well well it's only for three colors or four colors but it's no big deal and of course the games and the game is gonna be guys Switch Blade 2 I know not many people well actually it's kind of difficult to say if how many people like or dislike that game but in my opinion it's probably the best game it's not really the best best one but i really love this game uh oh it didn't work let's see okay guys yeah it's up and running and looks really really good the quality wise i mean just by looking two pictures original pure rgb on a 15 kilohertz monitor and rgb to hdmi on a hdmi monitor and uh, i mean this one is slightly brighter uh, the color it looks right this one just need, need adjustment 
uh, when you're playing games, I'm not seeing any, any uh, gel bars or anything. Uh, now let's let me see which one is much cleaner, like like the pixels all around. Uh, I mean the the dude, the items, like these little things, and they both looks really really good. RGB to HDMI, I mean this monitor probably slightly better, slightly better, and. Uh, yeah, if you do have a uh, monitor already which capable support 15 kilohertz, probably there's no even reason, especially if you're just, play, uh, just using your Amiga to play uh, mainly uh, Amiga games, there's probably no reason to even buy it. But if you don't have monitor which can support 15 kilohertz, like I do have three of them, well, uh, then of course RGB to HDMI probably is the best option to go. And uh, the option, the one I bought, all all included, it's probably the best way to go. It costs a little bit more. It's probably like thirty dollars or forty dollars more than just uh, adapter itself. But then, how much has a hassle you? I mean, headaches you saving away. I mean, from uh, you bought everything, you put together, put it in, and five seconds later, it's up and running. I mean, it's. Yeah, it, it's really it's it's really nice to be honest. Uh, let me see. Yeah, it the quality wise it's really good, and I really like it. I mean, I hope my friend is gonna be really happy with this Amiga and with RGB to HDMI. Especially like I said, not many people do have monitor which can support 15 kilohertz. Well guys, pretty much that's all I got for this video. I hope it was helpful, enjoyable. If you guys did enjoy it, thumbs up. If you don't want to miss any future videos, subscribe. We will be really appreciate. Thank you.